Welcome to Introduction to Video Editing with iMovie or OpenShot. My name is Danny K. Johnson. I'm with the UVic Libraries McPherson Library Digital Scholarship Commons. So what we're doing today is going over some use cases for video editing, covering some video editing tips, and then there is a selection of workshop activities to go over some hands-on editing skills that you can work through in the lesson plan. Some use cases for school include making promotional videos for different services on campus, making how-to videos. Um, you can use green screen to put yourself or someone else in any location um, by changing the background. You can use the green screen room at the library during regular times when that service is open. You can also set up a green screen easily by having a bright green backdrop, or you can even use a bright blue backdrop. You can record experiments and other research. You can make a commercial for a class project or do almost any other video related project that you can imagine. You can borrow gear from the UVic libraries, such as laptops, DSLR cameras, camcorders, GoPro kits. There's microphones, audio recorders, and tripods. These are currently available um, by emailing request at uvic.ca. Um, if you are faculty and staff, you can request an exception to borrow the equipment from the music and media supervisor. And during non-busy times, this, these exceptions can sometimes be um, granted. A variety of different types of tripods and stabilizers available for your camera, and these are highly recommended to stabilize your shots. And camera shake isn't something that's noticeable when you're in the middle of filming, but it can be very noticeable when you go back to review your video. So that is highly recommended to use some form of stabilizer to keep your shots from having visible shake. The types of tripods available from the Music and Media Desk at the library range from small gorilla grip type tripods available for smartphones all the way up to um, large stable tripods for DSLRs and even monopods, which are great for moving around in rough terrain and when you have to move the camera around a lot for um, a variety of shots. It's helpful to use an external microphone, not rely on the camera microphone because it's a lower quality microphone, um, the one that's built into most cameras and you can have a lot more control if you're using uh, an external microphone. Something to be aware of is wind. If you've ever recorded, just even on your smartphone, you may be aware of the harsh sound that comes across when even just a breeze is blowing across a microphone. Something else is, is bouncing echoes. If you're in a room where there's a lot of smooth surfaces, Voices and other clacking sounds can create a lot of noise that echoes through your audio and that can be um, really distracting in your in the audio of your video. And one thing that can be good to do is to test your audio on location. So run um, some test shots and then plug in some headphones and go back and listen to the audio that you've just recorded, um, the video segment that you've just recorded, and make sure that the audio is of a quality that you're happy with before doing all of your filming in that location. And that way, you know if all the work that you're about to put in is going to be what you're happy with, and that'll help you from wasting a, a bunch of time. And uh, that way, if you need to change your location or change your setup in any way, you know ahead of time. Pay attention to you, your background. Make sure there aren't any distractions lurking. There might be some clutter in the background, some garbage, some other people, something that might end up being um, a distraction to the viewer. Uh, mix it up with a variety of shots. Um, if you're going to be doing, say, an interview and it's just 
a straight on shot of one person talking the whole time, that can be a little dull over a period of time. So move around, um, get some medium shots, some close-up shots, some wide shots, shoot from the side or from the front and other angles. Um, that way you can edit those in. If you've watched um, some engaging interviews um, done by professionals, you'll notice that it's not usually uh, just one long, you know, half an hour of a single shot of a person talking from, you know, their shoulders up. There's usually some interesting, you know, more dynamic shots of maybe, you know, the environment that they're in and um, some stills of the objects in the room or their hands or the, the space around them. You can uh, get something that's called B-roll, which is details and, you know, maybe even just walking to the venue and that, that sort of thing. Try not to zoom or pan too much. This can be dizzying for many people and uh, get more footage than you need. It's easier to have too much footage and edit it down than to have too little and try to, to scramble and stretch that out. You may find when, if you're, for instance, doing an interview video that someone is perhaps fidgeting or you might have something go out of focus or something distracting happens in the background and you need to edit that out, but the audio that you've gotten of them talking is a really important segment and you can cut out the video part of that section and replace it with some interesting B-roll that you've gotten, maybe a video section of their bookshelf or an interesting part of them holding their coffee cup or, or something that's going on in the room. And you can put that over the top of them, them talking and then it's just interesting texture that's happening while they're talking. And then that way you're able to edit out the distracting element that's happening in the video. And you don't have to worry so much about whatever had gone wrong in the video at that moment. Maybe the camera was bumped and uh, it's better to have that extra footage so that you can work around those issues that come up. Pay attention to the lighting, harsh shadows, um, such as overhead lighting that cast shadows over people's eyes, inconsistent shots if you're moving around to different locations. So sometimes skin tones might be warm and other times they're in shade so that the skin tones are too cold. And then when you edit those together, the video ends up looking inconsistent across things. Um, if people are backlit so that there's a window behind them and then they're they end up being um, in the darkness. Um, pay attention to where people are placed. Green screen lighting can be tricky, so you want to make sure that the light on your subject is coming from the same direction as the light in the green screen background footage that you're about to take. A couple of helpful editing skills that will speed up your editing. We'll just pop out of this presentation and go into iMovie to show you. One of them is known as scrubbing. So if you look in the lower portion of the software, you'll see that you can move across the timeline of the video. And in the upper right corner, as we move across, you can speed through the video really quickly to see where you're at. And this is called scrubbing. In iMovie, you can do this by just mousing across the timeline of the video. Um, in OpenShot, you do this by grabbing the top handle and dragging it across, but it does the same thing. And that way you don't have to play through the video until you get to the, the part that you want to. The other thing that you can do is once you get Say you get to the place that you want, you can just stop there and then you hit the space bar on your keyboard and it'll start playing where you want it to. And when you want to stop, you just hit the space bar again. 
And that way, instead of going all the way up here and hitting play, you're not moving across the software all the time. You can just be down here, mousing across, hit play and pause using the space bar. And this way you can hit play and pause anywhere in the video. And this speeds up your time significantly. And those are two very useful skills. And they're very simple, and uh, but they'll make your life a lot easier. Hopefully that will help speed you along. And if you want to go ahead from here and dive into the activities, if you've reached this video, then you have access to the lesson plan. And there are a series of different activities to work through that work, teach you how to do initial edits in iMovie and OpenShot, depending on whether you are on a Mac or Windows. They teach you how to do things like slow motion video, put in transitions and titles into your video, detach audio, add additional audio, work with green screen videos. Um, there's also some bonus activities that teach you how to do screen capture, such as is used to make this video. And um, there's also a bonus activity on how to make storyboards using a software called Storyboarding, Storyboarder. So as always, if you have any questions, you can get in touch with us by emailing dscommons at uvic.ca. We're happy to answer your questions.